the sun is out there, right? What a beautiful day. Nice. So I'm just thinking, here's the gorgeous Greystones players. You guys have been involved in it with uh, Aideen and the gang for, for quite a while. Harvey, how did that come to be? Do you know whose idea that was? Because it's a, I know the film very well. It's a beautiful film. Well, it was definitely Aideen's idea yes. to, to do Harvey. We were talking about a few other ones, and then this kind of came out of uh, left field a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. But it's a great play. Yeah. Well, we should say Mary Chase, 1944, was the original play, but then more importantly for a lot of people, James George, 1950, great little film yeah. and it has that it's just at the base is really it's just a, a guy who has a puka which is a, a, a kind of an old mythical version of a rabbit only he can see him he's his best friend people start to worry about his sanity um, was it a lot of I know that you're playing Elwood which is kind of James George part was, I don't yeah. know if you can kind of you know I don't know whether you have to think well this guy is acting crazy but he's obviously not there's all these different and then yes is the audience know what's going on is it true is it not true was there I don't know if there was any kind of you know, research you can do on that or whether it's just instinctive? Yeah, no, it was about looking and uh, reading, the, reading the role, reading the notes and then trying to see where he was coming from. There are parts of it where other people do see him. Uh, uh, Vita, uh, Harvey's, or Elwood's sister, sees him from right. time to time. Right. He reveals himself to some people and I guess at the same time the audience is left to come up with their own answer at mm. the end right. is... Uh, how, how real he is. Um, but I suppose I I in terms of it, it's what what Harvey manages to facilitate for Elwood. That uh, Harvey seems to... Elwood was at a time, I think, in his life where he was in the, the same as anybody, and like us now as well, there were rat races back in the in the 40s. I think we, yeah. we sort of think busyness is a modern, uh, a modern thing, but uh, it's been around for a long time. And I think Harvey came around at a time where where Elwood kind of needed a break and he embraced mm. that. And I think that line that um, that he has for, for decision whether to be smart or be pleasant, yeah. I think that's that kind of sums up a little bit his, yeah. what Harvey is for him. Right. Um, yeah. And w w would you, I don't know if there's a, such a thing, you know, and great stories sort of have that ability to kind of just tap into something universal and we all sort of recognise. I don't know if, if for you guys whether... It was obvious from the start whether there was a little road to Damascus moment while you're analysing it and rehearsing it that you think, oh, this is this is the, the message in this film, this is the heart of this film. For me, yeah, I think um, when you get more and more familiar with the text, you know, when you can stop worrying about remembering your lines and you can actually start to really um, kind of Connect. delve into the meaning of the play. Um, and I think for me, I definitely, the more the more we've, we've gotten into it, the more I feel like there is... There is a message and there is a journey for for various characters through the play, all around that same message. Mm -hmm. and what the message? The, the message is character. Yeah. the message is. No, I think you got. Yeah, I think you I grow. Think I do. Come on, you go <laughs> looking for this guy, and then you know. I we won't give any plot away now, but we won't. But definitely, I yeah. think your trajectory changes. You're very happy. I don't know. Possibly, possibly. So you definitely yeah. look happy on stage, anyway. <laughs> But it's, I'm guessing part of the message is if, if you're feeling kind of, you know, high and confused and you start seeing rabbits, it's not always a bad thing. It's sometimes it works yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, possibly. No, it is interesting you talk about that journey because we're, uh, well, very often it comes to you when you're not really paying attention. You have learned the mm. lines, you have, they have kind of become part of you. Your family are tired of hearing them and they, uh. they're talking and they're, your monologues and everything. But it was funny, I was listening to, I listened to a podcast, This American Life, and there was one on uh, yesterday, I was listening to it in the shower, and uh, this woman was a therapist, and she was talking about a breakup she had had, she's like a therapist in, uh, in America, and she was talking about her breakup, and she was talking about her life, and then she was talking about how she had, um, how she spoke, how she got on with her clients, and how the breakup affected her, and she mm. attended therapy, and all these sort of things. But really what she discovered through this breakup was the layers that people put in front of themselves that keep them away from really true contact yeah. with other people. Yeah. And if you allow these to go, if you care less about what people think about you, you actually have a more real you experience. Have a, a deeper and, connection. And, and yeah. I think you see that with Elwood. It, all the other people in the play kind of are struggling the same as the rest yeah. of us kind of yeah. going oh well I have to look like this at work and yeah. this at home and being proper and, be, yeah. and doing what's correct yeah. and doing what's expected and rather and than and doing and what you might of course, what we, to do the way we live now there's another layer which is which is social media which yeah. kind of just 
puts a layer between you and an actual real interaction. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's very comfortable and it's, and it's quite easy and you can stay in your pajamas. You don't actually yeah. have to get dressed or anything like that. And that seems to be also, I think, you know, if, if, if the lady's talking about the way that we just put layers on, mm. that, that I think is, is probably the, the, a kind of a something that we're all going to have to figure out yeah. over the coming years because it seems to have a real, even just in a small town like Greystones, you can feel that yeah. there's a disconnect between... Absolutely. reality and, and what's going on online. And the thing about Elwood is that there's no facade with Elwood. I mean, with every, you know, with the, everyone else within the play has a, has agendas and has facades and has layers that they put in front of us the way we all do. Yeah. Um, well, not but me. Elwood doesn't have that. No, no, not of course me. not. No, 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 no. Um, and of course, James Stewart, he's probably the most huggable American actor and certainly yeah. playing the everyman idea that he's you know, he's handsome without being kind of, you know, Gary Cooper or Cary Grant and all that, yeah. but he's also vulnerable. And, and I, I don't know whether that was, uh, you know, a kind of a worry that, that that's some yeah. kind of guy, uh, some to actor fill. to sort of, you know, some imitate or to go near. Yeah, hat to fill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, you know, Aiden always tells us to stay away from, from these things, mm. but <laughs> we're like kind of bold children here before Christmas. <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of go I'm looking for the rest. No, I didn't look at that. So I remember watching the first scene, I remember I was busy doing some job around the house, and I just left it on so I left the film yeah. playing you can find it on YouTube mm. I left the film yeah. playing to get partly it was to get the story and partly to get to absorb this kind of character right and I really struggled I sound like a total dickhead actor now <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really struggled finding his voice because I right. had James Stewart on the one yeah. hand and then I was picking up stuff from other people did auditions and I was kind of going oh that sounds really good I should try it like that yeah. and I would say there was a good six weeks that I was kind of going I was trying to be something in between them and then Aideen was giving me sort of direction would you try this and I was trying that as well and I felt like one of these don't you know that car that Homer makes don't you know they say oh you're the common man we're going to make that car and he's added on bits it's yeah. like food yeah. processors and everything like that I right. felt kind of like all of these things and and it was coming out like this garbled mess but actually then I just kind of I kind of couldn't keep that all on, in mind mm. so I kind of let that a bit go and Aiden really voice. helps you she sort of said no listen be real be yeah. your own and she's great you know she's really helpful she's, she takes for me she takes for me definitely I'm like a lump of putty that uh, she or more like oh. that she takes and just kind of makes something of you and I think that's wonderful and she gets you to give input and everything but mm. it's uh Right. I, I think it's just as a as an experience working with her over the last what two and a half three years. It's yeah. just been extraordinary. You know? I don't know whether I, I can't think of if I I don't think I did but but the imaginary friend thing was that something you guys ever had growing up is it I didn't have I, I didn't think. my brother did my All brother right. had an imaginary friend like a very when I say a very real imaginary friend that's a very present you know you don't really have a brother right yeah Matt Popin was his name right okay we'll so, check uh, that yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. great name isn't it Matt the Matt the Pulpin. Pulpin. What yeah. Wow. Great. And what's a pulpin? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not far from Puka. I mean, it could be in the area. I like pulpins. But that idea too that that and, and kids, it's a, it, it's sort of a seen as a rich thing to do is just to have for a while this you know notion mm. of, of somebody is your kind of companion and, and of course you hope that it's a healthy thing and yes. that's not because it's compensating and all that. But um, but I guess this is, this movie taps into that idea of. Not just madness, like in, on one level, which is you know could be mm. perceived that way, but it is that sort of escape and that sort of almost giving yourself over to magic and giving yourself over to inner thoughts and and letting you know your instincts yeah. just be played out rather than constantly worrying, as we said, about what other people think. And I and I suppose bringing another side out in you as well, mm. I think is is one of the key things about it is allowing right. yourself to be that other person that maybe you know is not is not conventional and it yeah. doesn't have that facade yeah and, yeah. and actually there's this there, what the, there is a convention of when you get older mm. you can do whatever you like you know there's a yes. wonderful poem when I'm older I'll wear purple and yeah. all the different things <laughs> yeah. they do yeah, yeah. why not just start wearing purple now you and know? I suppose that's what Alwood does he yeah. just embraces it he, he decides yeah. well I think he's 47 in the play mm. um, right um Obviously, I'm trying to play another. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been the biggest. Adding that year on is a tough one, but you're getting there. You're getting there. Um, but uh, you know, he's done. He's been doing it, I think, for about five years, and uh, so he's he's and he's having a blast, and people mm. respond really well to him. Yeah. Like, yeah. And again, it's everybody's choices. I hate. Uh, I think it was who says somebody calls somebody else didactic in it. Is, is, is um, Vita calls my character right. didactic. And, and yeah. yeah, and actually, it's interesting she calls you didactic because uh, 
it, this play isn't didactic. This is mm. not trying to teach you and ram some sort of no, message down no. your throat. It's going, these are the options, these are the yeah, possibilities. Absolutely. Take, take away from And we step into the world of, you know, when you think about the great Alan Adamson, who channels Elvis on, on a regular basis, his love and, and belief in being Elvis is, mm. is, is complete, really, yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. And that ultimately is just a lovely thing. It's not like, oh, you know, you should really know that, yeah. Yeah, you know, Elvis it's was this character, you were this else, person. So and, but it? also yeah. the joy it brings yeah, in him exactly. and the joy it brings in others because mm. nobody I've ever seen just react other than smiling when they see yeah. Alan yeah. Kind of, yeah. uh, stroke Elvis coming yeah. down the road. He just has that yeah. kind of trigger in us all that, that he, yeah. is, he is Harvey. He is that yeah. sort of joyful. Yeah. Yeah. And he is sort of a uh, living... That instinctual thing, as opposed to, mm. I really should wear, you know, a suit and tie yeah, and yeah. try to. I mean, I suppose in the play, there's only real, there's only one real character who has a massive issue with Elwood and Harvey, and that's the character that I'm playing. Right. And um, but apart from that, everyone else is sort of, to a certain extent, willing to, to sort of go along with it. Right. Um, but it's getting in, in the way of my plans. Yeah. And of course, the so. beauty of it, of it is just how it all plays out and what ultimately. The writer and, and all that would, would say, this is what we want to leave people with when, when they walk out the door. And I think that idea that, it, you know, has a beautiful kind of a mm. sensibility in that way. It doesn't, you know, overplay its hand and you do feel yeah. kind of that the magic is there. And, and that uh, and I think it, it's a lot to do with not only the writing, but of course, you know, just the, the, the sweet nature of it. It's, it's mm. not like we're dealing with uh, somebody's breakdown. This is no. ultimately a very oh, sweet. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. And, it's, yeah. And, and very funny. Yes, um, yes. But it's all, but there's a lot about what you want to take from it yourself as well. You yeah. know, it's not necessarily um it's she hasn't told us uh what to believe at the end of it. You can make mm. up your own mind. And I've always been of the belief that, that Richard Kelly's Donnie Darko in two thousand one was like the, mm. the sort of like the twisted kind of gothic cousin <laughs> of, of Harvey. Just that idea that yeah. you know, in, in its own way it has that yeah. sort of purpose to, to egg him on to whatever he wants to do. He's Tyler Durden, all this kind of stuff. Exactly, yeah. We should we should say it's it's on on the uh, night of the the dates. The second, second to second the, to the fifth of May, so it's the May Bank Holiday weekend. Perfect. Uh, Thursday to to Sunday, eight o'clock. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nice. and four o'clock on Sunday. Afternoon. And I'll have the links below this anyway, straight to the tickets, and yeah. people can figure it out. Yeah. Also, I mean, Grayson's player, even though it's only been going for like two years, a lot of a lot of productions already. You know, it seems like yeah. two or three a year. Mm. There's a lot of work involved and a lot of joy too, because as much as it's about those involved behind the scenes putting on a show mm -hmm. there is that great great feeling of being in an audience with people you know up on stage mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a, a sleepover or a coach trip somewhere naughty it just feels like we're all up to something here yeah. and that's I just think that's an incredible um, yeah. feeling and, and, and we get it with the film club sometimes and, and we get it you know with many different shows where you just sort of think that's much more kind of valuable ultimately in your, in your sense of self mm -hmm. never mind a, bit, a night out yeah. Um, than just about anything and, and, and I hope now yeah, people kind of yeah the successful I mean you know yeah, we're, we're yeah. always looking for new members so if anyone is ever interested they can yeah. they can get cool. in touch and um, yeah well, but again we yeah. put in the, uh, the yeah. contacts and all that but yeah, good luck with the show, and um, you hopefully much. your psychology, you, you'll, you'll learn deep, deep lessons from this and become a brighter, more centred person. <laughs> You're feeling that. <laughs> yeah, we'll go for that, Gandhi. <laughs>